This video is brought to you by NEW, a technology company building energy solutions that enable a faster transition to an electric future. Hello, good morning, and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me inside of the BMW XM, where I'm gonna share just some thoughts about this car being a plug-in hybrid and sort of con a condensed XM review, if you will. But also interestingly, we're on our way to the Denver airport right now because we're going to Los Angeles. And typically I, um, you know, drive test cars when I'm over in California. We don't get very many review vehicles in comparison here to Colorado. So whenever I'm in California, I take the opportunity to drive things that would never come here to make videos for you guys. Um, however, I, I just booked this trip last minute. I didn't arrange for any test cars. So what I did was I decided to rent a car from Hertz. And recently we tested that rental Model Y from Hertz. I had such a great experience with it. I said, well, let's, let's try again, but let's do something kind of interesting. They had an EV's manager special, which was like $300 cheaper for the week. That WRX was ripping it. Um, which was like three, maybe even $400 cheaper for the week. And they're like, they'll just choose the EV for you. And honestly, like, I don't really care. We're just sticking around the LA area this trip. If I have a Bolt, that's cool. If I have a Nero, that's great. Um, and um, yeah, so I was like, well, let's see what we get. So this is gonna be some final thoughts about this as a plug-in hybrid, the BMW XM. And then we are off to um, see what kind of car Hertz gets us. I'm really looking forward to this. Well, we're just about to merge onto the highway in the BMW XM and I noticed the combustion engine just kicked on. And something that BMW plug-in hybrids do that, that I actually really like is if you use the internal navigation function here, which you can see I've programmed in 54 minutes away, 65 miles where we're going, it will automatically transition between electric and combustion to get you the best efficiency over the entire trip and to use as much electric as possible in the smartest way from an efficient perspective. Now, this car is an XM, which is their top SUV. Uh, it's $165,000 as tested. It's got the big sound system and everything, great sound system. And it truly is a wonderful driving car at speed. Um, but I encourage you to watch my electric driving review, which is where I've really focused on the electric bits of plug-in hybrids. And that was okay. It definitely has plenty of range and plenty of acceleration in electric mode. Like you can daily this thing and never use the combustion engine. It has about 27 kilowatt hours usable, a big battery in this. Uh, and again, about 200 horsepower worth of electric acceleration. But it's just not tuned well. It's very clunky at low speeds, and um, you know it, it actually like it's not that comfortable to drive in electric mode or in uh, gas uh, hybrid mode either. And um, yeah, it, it's very interesting just to watch it figure out what it wants to do, where it wants to do it, and how it manages engine temperatures. It's probably the most aggressive plug-in hybrid I've ever driven on the combustion engine. Starts it up hard and shuts it right off. It's almost like it doesn't even have to go through that long of a a cold start warm-up process which is really interesting so to me uh, just some sort of final thoughts on this car uh, the driver assistance is definitely a standout we're using it right now I've just activated it this is sort of one of the best systems on the planet does automatic lane changes all that good stuff I've done a hot back review of this system and it's scored very highly it's got a great sound system it's really quiet in here um, it's great at covering miles being a plug-in hybrid but I think if your intention is to use it as electric around town and then combustion out and you know when you go out to the country go to your second home whatever you're doing with this it can work for it but just don't expect a smooth electric driving experience because the electric motors pre-transmission and I think they use the beefed up eight speed from the M cars in this one it's just a little bit Oh, very clunky when it shifts gears. So that's a, a downside. Um, styling wise, actually growing on everyone, especially blacked out. Um, you know, watch our previous video for some exterior looks. The big problem is it's it's not really an M car. It shouldn't be called an XM. Uh, it, it's actually not that fast in my opinion. Like it, nothing here qualifies as being an M. 
And, and it would be so much better if they just called it the X and took all the M stuff out and just made it uber luxury. Like go, oh, not quite calling in levels because they can't step on their feet, but charge $165,000 for like super soft suspension and cushy seats and all that stuff. The seats are incredible in this car already. They just need to back down the suspension a bit, I think, in uh, normal driving mode. So uh, yeah, it's like the performance stuff make this thing worse in my opinion. The last component is the price as it sits, $165,000. <laughs> I'd rather have a fully loaded iX M60 for 40 grand less, less than 40 grand less, or more than 40 grand less. Uh, they're 115, I think. And so that's just the way to go. So I'm not really sure why BMW made this car. Maybe if you're a very successful stripper, this is like a car you can really aspire to own. But other than that, I, I don't really see the point. I'd rather get an iX. So there's my very quick condensed iX review. No, XM review. Uh, it should just be the X and remove the M. Uh, cool. Let's go to the airport, drop this thing off, pick up a Hertz rental, and see what kind of car we get. It should be kind of fun. Look at that beautiful sunrise over here in the uh, distance. Uh, one thing I haven't really shown you guys is uh, sort of the wide open sound of the XM. So what we're going to do is make sure you cannot see the speedometer because we're going to go as totally legal uh, 55 miles an hour. I'm going to engage the M2 button which I've programmed into my spicy mode. I'm going to, uh, well it auto automatically is in the spicy mode, uh, manual shifting, so let's drop a few cogs. sound, which I actually don't like as much as their M Sport V8s. Actually, I think all BMW S engines of late sound worse than their B variant engines. Um, only the nerds will understand what I'm talking about, like BMW nerds engine codes, but uh, it's just sort of the, the firing nature of this compared to the other, the way that they run that the uh, exhaust valves and a few other things that make this sound a little bit, I would say, video gamey. But uh, it's not bad, it's kind of cool. I mean, M5 sound this way and stuff like that. So it's got the M sound. Um, and, and it's not slow, I shouldn't say it's like not fast. It gets up okay. But for $160,000, like this thing should wipe a Model X plaid. Like why haven't the Germans like just gone full crazy power? I don't know. Because um, I see so many people just going for electric options like Model X plaid, uh, Rivian R1S has more power than this. And, and others and it's just like the Germans even with their crazy M stuff like you know the, the automotive market is moving so fast they need to like crank the power to excuse me crank the power to 11 all right so if we get over the fact that this isn't really that great of an M car we're gonna put the drivetrain back into comfort um, and we just focus on if you have to do miles in a vehicle driver assistance truly one of the best BMW's driving assistant plus this that the other whatever they call it is great this sound system is one of the best in the industry this Bowers and Wilkins it's worth it's I think it's the $3,400 option it's worth every penny um, there's so much to like about this car I got the massaging seat on and then you hit a bump and you're like oh, oh, oh. and it's just like take the M out of it and it's so much better because it's already not that fast go super luxury that's my recommendation to BMW. So anyway, I love this sick roof. I hope you guys saw that when it was darker earlier. The, the roof doesn't open, which makes it like very dark and uh, almost like a club vibe in here, if you will. Um, but I think that's, that's kind of cool and leads to the character of the car. I would personally prefer glass roof, but I understand why they went with this roof. It is really cool. If they could figure out a way to keep this pattern and have it slide open, that would be perfect. But this is non-movable. Um, great. Well, we're running just a bit late for our flight. It's six o'clock in the morning on the nose. Sun's coming up and uh, we got to go. So we are, um, actually, it's, we know for sure it's faster than a Model 3 because or long range, not a performance, uh, because we did a little bit of a situation getting on the highway and we were just pulling away. Welcome to Los Angeles, California. We are currently in a tube getting off the airplane. Let's go over to Hertz.
and welcome to Los Angeles. Uh, we just popped off the plane, easy flight. That's the nice thing about living in Denver. We have direct flights, multiple options everywhere. I don't know if I'm gonna be here for two days or two weeks, but I can just take a flight home whenever. And Hertz is pretty flexible with that. Not an ad, not sponsored. I literally just went on my app and booked this just like the last one. So anyway, here in the app, there's my confirmation number. It says head to the gold directory board. The one thing I don't know where to go is like, where the heck is it? Do we have to take a bus? or what's going on it says check-in closed go to counter but i already checked in um so i checked in on the app here and it said um uh, i am not arriving by airplane i am arriving by airplane anyway this is a little bit weird because yeah i already checked in in time so that i could just walk to the walk to hertz they should have my name and we can just go with the car we don't have to wait in line so let's hope that's the case. We need to figure out how to get there. So I'm gonna do a little bit of research, see if we see one of these buses or if it's a place we can walk to, I don't know. And um, yeah, we'll go locate the spot and we'll figure out what we get. All right, so I'm looking at the Hertz Los Angeles CNG bus. So I, I think it's down here. That's what we gotta do, get on a bus. And here we go, the rental car buses. Here's the Hertz one. Let's jump on this thing. Okay. Looking freaking packed right now. This thing is jammed. All right, so the Hertz app uh, refreshed and take a look down here. You can see it now says we are checked in. It says head to the gold directory board and choose a vehicle and drive to any exit gate. Does that mean we get to choose? I don't know. But uh, basically these are our steps and that's what we're gonna be doing. All right, here we go. Look at all this, this is the board. So we gotta find our name. A lot of Teslas around. This is crazy, it's a little bit convoluted, but I'm sure we'll find it. Well, we were just talking to the nice people here at Hertz. They're cool, look, they have a Polestar 1 over here. They have another Polestar 1 up front, which is sick. So, Southwest coming overhead right now. <laughs> um, basically, we booked C6, which is Electric Car Manager Special. It's a discounted rate. She said, you can't do the Teslas or a Polestar 2, but we can choose a Bolt, EV or EUV, or the new Nero. Now, I haven't driven the new Nero yet. Nax has. So I thought, okay, which would be better for content? Which would be more interesting? And we've done plenty with Bolt. There's really not much more to say about it. It's going out of production, but the Nero just got a refresh. So let's take a look at our options. We can choose any of them. Um, I wonder if the EV6 counts. She didn't say it did, but the Nero does. This is a good color. Okay. Uh, there's also two orange ones over here. They all seem to be the same trim level. Or so let's take a look at this. I'm loving this color here. Yep, fully electric. Let's take a look. Yep, CCS charging. Looks like it's full. So uh, I don't know. I'm kind of feeling. Feeling, let's take the Nero. This thing looks good. Uh, I like this color too. So this or orange, what do you think? Green. Green, okay. Green is for us. Let's do it. Well, they really just have one hell of a selection of vehicles here. This Polestar 1 looks amazing. And, uh, you know, we have one of these on test right now, which is just awesome. So there's two Polestar 1s here. This thing, these were all the X marketing cars for Polestar. And when they bought all those Polestar 2s, I don't think they could ever actually retail these. So they threw them in to sweeten the deal a little bit. I'm pretty sure I've driven and reviewed this exact car here once. That is so cool. Um, some viewers were actually here just the other day and uh, sent me some pictures of that. So just lots of Teslas around. They're just kind of like getting whatever car fits in your category. Take it. So you get to choose. I really love that. Love having the option. I guess we could have had that orange one. We're going for this green one here. Uh, they're all plenty of electric cars. Polestar 2s, Bolts. Yeah, I think the Nero is the better choice over the Bolt, personally. 77 kilowatt charging versus 50. That's my main determination, I think. Let's jump in this thing. Keys? Did it come with the goldfish? No. <laughs> oh. On. Okay, good. And um, we're at 208 miles of range. We're at 75% state of charge. Just right over there. Well, that's pretty freaking awesome. So this looks like a pretty 
lower trim level model. Is there a window sticker in here or something? Let's take a look. What's in here? Rental contracts. I don't know. Interesting. They expect two incidences for one vehicle. The EV settings, 77% state of charge. They have it limited to 90% on AC and DC. But guess what? Rental car lifestyle. Hundo, baby. Um, yeah, maybe on AC charging. But at least on DC charging, you no reason to do that. AC charging maximum. Smart regen. So many settings in these. We got to get it all figured out but we're actually running to the act conference right now so let's blast over there and kind of uh, see how this process goes when we pull out of here but for now this is this is looking great it's got heated seats it's got all the driver assistance oh this is the clear choice over a bolt wow very very nice here so there's an electric vehicle quick start guide and faqs i'm just genuinely curious what does this actually give us so let's go to hertz.com and see what this thing does it says Tesla and Polestar. Um, we are driving a Kia Nero, so mm, not very helpful there, Polestar. I mean, Hertz, is it? Meet the Polestar 2, blah, 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 how to start. But I guess they just expect people to understand how to put a car and drive. And, and honestly, electric cars are becoming much more common knowledge as a whole if you're booking this category. So I think people are open to a bit of adventure. Yeah, they got the climate control cranked to the max over here. So let's just go 68 on auto one. Man, these cars are feature packed. I have not been in the new Nero, but this is a wonderfully redone interior. They got the Mercedes style cup holders, I think. Yes, check this out. This is always, I don't actually know why they do this, but boom. <laughs> okay, into drive. Eco mode is on. How do we change our drive mode? We go here to normal. These things do massive burnouts. Hurts if you're watching this. I did not say that. Uh, but I do have to test that at some point. It is a rental car after all. I'm going to basically reset our trip stuff. I got to get back in the group. Okay, hold OK to reset. Boom. Accumulated info. Boom. Idle mode. Don't know. Great. That's all looking nice. Brightness on the illumination, up. Driver assistance, there we go. Lane stuff on, into drive. Oh yeah, regen settings right here. This is a really nice display. Zero, medium, auto, all the way up to max iPedal. Is what Hyundai calls it, but is it iPedal? No. But I can hold the left paddle to a stop. There's gotta be a one pedal mode somewhere in this thing, you would think, but really uh, looking forward to this. I don't think I've ever made a video with a Nero Electric on this channel or any of our channels. Oh, look at that Polestar one right there in silver. That is gorgeous. I, it kind of ruins it a little bit that it's a rental car. Yeah. But what a special machine. And there's three of them here. Meanwhile, I've never seen one on the road at all. So we exit left. So they have Teslas, Polestars. They have a Wrangler 4xe Willys which is pretty hardcore that particular spec another nero right here and i think what i have to do is just show them my phone as we leave so model y's all down this way model three and y's that way it seems this is more combustion car land but definitely no another question polestar one. another polestar one wow um, definitely seems like more evs than combustion cars here like by like a large number Maybe they figured Another out they're easier to maintain. Yeah, over here we're getting more into combustion land for sure. But uh, even on that side, there were electric cars earlier. Pretty interesting. So it says, please exit this way. So we'll do that. Another Polestar one over there, EV6. Wow. <laughs> this is so cool. So let's exit stage left right here. I guess we got to go through this traffic line to get out of here. And this is where they're like, you took the wrong car. <laughs> We'll see what they say. I mean, the lady said getting a Nero, so we should be good. The manager's special. Oh, that's fine. This is all you need for getting around LA, I think. You don't need a Tesla. Um, let's see. Which line should we go in? The far line? The far. The far line. Taking it. Yeah, there's a big gap in between. That's why I picked it. And they're moving. What? Oh, well, they open up this one. Oh, really? Might be. No, he's saying, no, don't go that way. 
And now this person's trying to cut in line. <laughs> this is awesome. It, look, he's literally trying. He just like drove up and pulled full New York mode. Oh, no. Oh, what a disaster. Okay. Anyway, he's getting yelled at by that guy. Let's pull up our Hertz app. So we go here, Hertz. Um, and hit the road, go to execute. Oh, I just got to show my driver's license is what it says. So let me get that out. So then we really could have just taken anything. You know, by the way, people think, you know, we do these ad integrations and we don't ever use those products. What? This is a ad integration to extra wallet. Um, I use this thing every day. Yeah. It's nice. Thanks for sponsoring us. Things awesome. All right. Let's see what happens when we get up here. looks like we'll be in line for a few minutes. While we're sort of inching up in this, I'm just about to get the car kind of set up. The first thing I actually need to do is to disable um, this beep. This beep sucks. Beep off. Thank you. Okay, now we can actually go through and set this thing up. So vehicle, uh, driver assistance, driving convenience, highway drive assist, yes. Smart cruise control. Oh, we, I love this. So what's the default setting? So we want to be like full New York mode, pretty fast acceleration and very quick response time. We don't need to be doing burnouts, but I think this is set up for LA traffic. Um, highway auto speed change based off navigation data. Nah, I want to go full send. Speed limit, we'll go five over. Speed limit warning, okay. Warning sound, all good. This is all pretty normal stuff. We want early forward collision warning. We don't want to crash, even though I got all the insurance. I always get the insurance. Um, all right, so I think we went through this whole menu here. Drive mode, climate control, eco mode. Don't, don't really need that. Range won't be an issue. Cluster theme selection. Ah, this is important. Classic A, take a look over here. Now this is B. This is C. Well, that's not bad. And this is dynamic. Whoa, I hate that. I think we'll just keep it on A. And what else do we want to adjust here? Climate, recirculate air when you go into tunnels. That's usually an option. Yep, activate when going into tunnels. All good stuff. Okay, I think this is all set nicely. EV, set that. Utility mode, don't need. Smart regen, we want strong deceleration, but we're not really going to be using smart regen. We want to, while charging, keep the connector locked. And I don't really read these charge prompts, sure. Sound, premium sound, position, centered, tone. Yeah, someone's got it right. Base up to the max, baby. Okay, I think we're good. That's kind of really all I needed to do. We'll just plug in CarPlay for the rest, even though I'm not really a CarPlay person, but it's better than using this system. And uh, this is like a nice rental car. This is really, I don't know what trim level it is. Uh, forgive me for not knowing offhand what it comes with. I don't know if it's the top one, but what more would you get? I mean, there's a couple missing buttons here, maybe for cooled seats, but it's got lane centering, adaptive cruise control, Pretty good power. DC fast charging at 77 kilowatts is fine. Um, and it's an interesting car. This is cool. And it was, I don't even know how much we paid. I think 50 bucks a day, 48 bucks a day, something like that. Mm. Wasn't much at all. So very impressive. And then, uh, you know, adding all the insurance. I think it was like $700 for a week. That's not bad. Really not bad. So let's uh, talk to this dude and see what he wants to do. As he walks right in front of us, we almost ran him over. Well, they just lowered this massive barrier right here, so we are good to pull out. And uh, man, these things will like stop a freaking truck. Look, if you look right here, you'll see it. And I asked her, has anyone ever smashed into it? She said, yep. <laughs> uh, pretty awesome. So just pulling out of Hertz now. Um, she was great. She basically, you know, no issues about the car. Did, didn't say anything about that. I asked her how much um, state of charge she wants it back with since no one told us along the way. She asked what we were at. I said, we're at 75. We're at 77. And um, she said, just bring it back with at least 70%, which seems somewhat reasonable. 
So, uh, ooh, got some creaks and rattles in the back of this thing I've noticed already. Uh, passive rear view mirror, full throttle. Oh yeah, rental car lifestyle, full send. So um, all is good. The only thing we forgot to do was get a thumbnail. So we just need to get a thumbnail in front of the Hertz sign and then we can rip over to the convention center. That was a phone dropping and we'll be good to go. So where's the sport mode in this thing? Full power. Man, it's not slow. Like you don't need any more than this, that's for sure. All right, let's rock and roll. Well, now you join us uh, here in Anaheim, California. We've made it over to ACT, which is like a medium and heavy duty fleet expo for electrification. So um, a <laughs> lot to explore here, really looking forward to it. We don't cover enough medium and heavy duty stuff, so that'll be pretty sweet. The Nero's great. It's got a big rattle in the back, but it could just be my suitcases sitting weird. Um, we were fairly efficient on the drive over here and I kind of like boogied most of the way. So let's see what we got. 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Impressive considering we were just pegged uh, the whole time. So that's pretty great. And um, there's so many electric cars here, like every Hertz electric car rental seems to be pulling into the same parking lot. I don't think you can see any right now, but we saw like 20 Polestars and Teslas everywhere and they all have the same little stickers on the windshield up here. So I guess everyone who came into this event also rented electric cars. So we're doing the thing. And uh, just a quick fun video. This is what an EV manager special gets you at the LAX airport. Um, seems to get you a Bolt or a Nero, but I've also heard of other people getting an EV6. I've heard of, I haven't heard anyone getting a Tesla with this um, a manager special situation, but I've heard of people getting Polestar. So I think it's just luck of the draw at this particular location. That's what we got. And I gotta say, I'm thrilled. As a rental car, this is incredible. It has great lane centering, great adaptive cruise control, pretty good sound system, good tech, has everything I kind of need to get around. And this is just such a step above the uh, Bolt. Uh, of course, you can get a Bolt EUV with Super Cruise, but they didn't have any um, you know, top spec Bolts that were in that parking lot. So this was the best choice, I think. Really looking forward to it. I think I'll do a range test and maybe a 10% challenge with it as well. Could be kind of interesting. Let me know if you'd like to see that. But uh, yeah, for now, we are gonna go explore electrification for commercial use over the next few days. So we'll see you in another one soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.